Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me here in Sydney, Australia. We're in the same library that I was in last month. It seemed to work quite well. I think the sound worked really well and that's really important. As far as reports go, I've got one more to do in Sydney before I fly back to London. So that one I think we will do outdoors. We'll go somewhere interesting for that. Um, I've got an idea where I'd like to go, so stay tuned. There's going to be some more interesting locations. And I'd also like to welcome the new subscribers. Thank you so much for subscribing to this channel. You will see some really interesting content coming up over the next few months. And I thought it's worth me spending just a minute or two talking about where I'm at. So those of you who are new who've joined, this is not my usual location. Normally I'm in a kind of um, dark room office type setting. That's my place in London and I will be heading back there in October. Um, and this October onwards, I am going to get back into doing more regular videos. So at the moment, I've just been doing the monthlies and... That's because I'm back in Sydney, back at home with the family, but I will be returning to London. It will be business as usual. I am going to get back to doing weekly videos and um, I've got a lot of content ideas. So please stay tuned, stick around. There's going to be some really interesting content coming up in the coming months. So do stick around. What I normally do in these monthly reports is I do a recap on the past month. And those of you who are regulars know how I love to look and match up past news events with what's happening in the sky. Um, and so for those of you who are new, this is just the format that I typically do. So why don't we get started on that? Why don't we take a look at the news over the past month? So... The two news stories, there are two new news stories that I wanted to look at. One was Hong Kong and the other was just a quick check-in on Prince Andrew because there's some interesting stuff going on there. But um, let's start with Hong Kong. So I've been having a look at news reports, I've been doing some research and one of the news readers that I tuned into said that the unrest and all the problems really started 11 weeks ago, roughly 11 weeks ago. And I clicked back on my software to see what was happening 11 weeks ago. And sure enough, that was the famous Mars-Rahu conjunction. Mars and Rahu were coming together in the sky. And if you'd have watched my June report, um, the report for June that I had made, I'd said that 11 June to 22nd June was going to be particularly difficult for everyone in the world, and particularly if you've got planets um, anywhere near Rahu Ketu Axis uh, or Mars's position. So I definitely had some tough stuff to go through, and I can see why when I look at my chart. Um, but it was really interesting. When I did this research into the Hong Kong protests, on Wikipedia it states that the unrest began 31st March of this year. So I clicked back and I had a look at 31 March, and I'm kind of like... Yeah, Mars is, is not quite in the vicinity of Rahu at that point. But when you click up through the weeks and you see him rapidly approaching, um, when you see Mars rapidly approaching Rahu, that's when you begin to see things escalating in Hong Kong. And in Wikipedia, it states that there were hundreds of thousands marching in protest on June the 9th. And as I said, did I mention that... Um, the thing about June 11 to June 22, I mean, I had stated that, yeah, June 11 to June 22 was going to be very full on. And um, to me, this is just a fantastic example of, you know, obviously these protests happening June 9, that's right in the vicinity of Mars and Rahu being very tightly conjunct. Um, and Mars and Rahu signifying... It, it can signify a lot of things, um, but tensions, war, I mean, you think about Rahu, that's extremes, and you think about Mars, that's fighting for what you believe in. So, you know, there, there was an extreme situation there around June 9, and I just wanted to draw that out 
to show you that you are definitely tuning into the right kind of astrology. Sidereal Vedic astrology is, in my opinion, the best system that we have. It is the most accurate and this is a really great example of, of things manifesting that accurately match what's going on in the sky, that hermetic principle of as above, so below. It works so beautifully. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I like to match up news items with what's going on in the sky at the start of these reports. Okay, now the other news story that I had a look at briefly, I, I quickly looked at some charts in regards to Prince Andrew and Prince Andrew's connection with Epstein. Now, I didn't look at Epstein's chart. I think I did some time ago. Vaguely remember, I don't think there's a time for him. I would have looked at his moon chart. But we do have a time for Prince Andrew. And the one thing that I want to say here is that um, he is in his last phase of Sadi Sati. So I'm hoping that Saturn is able to root out or um, bring some justice possibly to Prince Andrew. I don't know if this is at all possible, but um, – and I, the other thing is I don't know. I, I don't know – too much about all of this but astrologically what I can say is that um, he's in the last phase of Sati Sati and from now until say June no from now until Jan Feb of next year it would be an ideal time for the planets to root out what's really going on uh, in, in regards to his connection say with Epstein or whatever that is and why is that so? I've seen this happen with Sade Sate, that sometimes Sade Sate, when it comes to a close, and don't worry, if you're in Sade Sate right now, you're probably not in this category at all. But I've seen this happen to, to criminals, people who've done really bad stuff, um, like Fred the Shred, okay, who was a famous city banker in London, who did a lot of wrong dealings financially and... and he was a criminal with money, basically. By the end of his Sati Sati, Saturn had stripped him of his knighthood, his assets, his position. Everything was gone. So I don't know what Saturn's going to be able to do uh, in regards to this. I'm sure he knows and he's working on everything and he's trying to root things out and he's, he's trying to... Um, bring justice and all of that but but of course you know one thing at a time um, maybe maybe things won't be find, found out I'm not sure so it's really interesting um, so those are the two news stories that I wanted to focus on to recap let's take a look at what's happening this month and let's take a look closer to home with all of us, um, what are some of the things I've been hearing from some of you, for example? One of the things I have been hearing from some of you is that some of you are feeling drained. Some of you are feeling really tired, low on energy after that last big full moon. And I've been seeing some chat about this um, on social media, even I've had a couple of emails from people about this. And it's it's been a really interesting time in terms of, of this group and this collective, what's going on. Some people um, have experienced members of the family who've passed away after the last big full moon and heartbreak as well. I'm just conscious that there are some people nearby, so I'm not going to talk too loudly. Um, heartbreak has also been an issue for some of you lately, some big um major breakups of couples who've been together for several years and things like that. So there's quite a mixture of things that's, that's, that are going on in the collective right now. Another thing, some of you are experiencing some mini healings, so it's not all bad. Oh, hang on. It's not all bad out there, which is good. Um, some of you are feeling lighter and that the load is lightening. Um, and again, that could be due to Saturn's movement. We're going to see this rapidly accelerate. Saturn is going to move away from Ketu. This is September 18th. Um, and then Saturn's going to feel quite free next year, Jan, Feb onwards. I think that's going to be a great time for all of us. So 
One of the reasons I wanted to talk about this thing of people feeling drained and low on energy and, and tired is because we do have a lot of planets in Leo. And um, I'm going to talk about this in a moment when we discuss, you know, the astrology of this month. But Leo, one of the things I said about this last month was that it's a social um, time for a lot of us. And if you can get out and socialize, that would be good. I certainly did. I flew up to Brisbane. I spent a really wonderful week with some friends of mine. It was very social for me. Um, I had a really, really good time. And there was a bit of work too. It wasn't just all fun. It was um, work as well. But like, I wanted to talk about that because Leo energy, we've got a lot of planets moving into Purva Falguni, which is symbolized by a bed. And it is about relaxation. It is about rest. Some of you might be feeling exhausted. And what I want to say is that if you can take time off or change the pace of your work or change the pace of your business or be easier on yourself somehow up until about 9, 11 September, that would be a really good thing to do if you can. Um, I think things are going to get start to get busy as planets move into Virgo. And that's really what we're going to talk about in the mini readings. So let's take a look here at the planets for this month. So this month, uh, it opens with three combust planets in and sun in Leo. So that's four planets really in Leo. Uh, and three of them are combust. Okay. So we've got the sun, and then we've got Mars, and we've got Mercury and Venus in Leo. And all those three are going to be combust at some point. Uh, Mercury is in Marga Nakshatra, the rest are in Purva Falguni. So Purva Falguni, look at that. I mean, if you can chill out or if you can take your foot off the accelerator of your life, that would be a good thing to do. And that is in relationships as well. Some of you, and I've observed this in close relationships and people around me, that they're kind of putting their foot on the accelerator when it comes to relationships. Not a great idea, not now anyway. Uh, that's That would be my advice. If you can slow the pace of life down a little bit, that would help you right now. Um, now we've got combust planets. Is this a bad thing? Are they not operating on as much power, for example? I mean, with combust planets, I do tend to think their power is slightly diminished. But th there's other things that you want to be looking at as well. Um, not just the fact that they're combust. <coughs> There's quite a few things to look at when you're analysing a planet in that way. Um, I've written a note here that it's not game over for those planets. Those planets are there, you know, their focus and their starlight is still in that area of life. So, you know, for all of us, I've got a note here, it'd be a good time to rest, socialise and experience the pleasure of life in terms of who we're with and in material terms as well. Another note I had written here, which was um, quite interesting, and this came up through my research, was that it's a good time to keep a check on your desires, okay? A time to learn how to ride your desires rather than be ridden by desire. So that was quite interesting too. Um, Leo can be quite heady energy, hedonistic energy. I don't know, people can... Um, you know, it's it's that infinite sun energy. It's it's that line in that Sting song where he says, you know, let's let's sell the house and spend all the money. It's that kind of, um, it's that infinity. It's that there are no limits sort of energy. So it's it's quite interesting. So we've still got we're still very much in Leo, but um, as I say, some of you it's just manifesting for you as exhaustion, and that's that's I think that's a good thing go with it um, and you know there are busier times so now's a good time to be tired and to be exhausted if that's you uh, September 11 onwards planets shift to Virgo and this is really what I'm going to be concentrating on in the little mini breakdowns this time I'm not doing a video per sign we're just going to fly through the zodiac and I'm going to do hyperlinks instead so I hope that's okay um, there's just not a huge amount to say this time I feel because there's a lot of planetary energy that we've we're kind of 
know and have mastered. There's, there's a lot of stability as well. The movement really is the four planets from Leo to Virgo. That's where the movement is this month. So let's have a look. Um, September 11 onwards, planets shift to Virgo. So Venus leads the way, entering Virgo 9 September. And then Mercury 11 September, the Sun 17 September, and Mars is the last 25th September. But basically, they're all moving into Virgo. And that's where the emphasis is, and that's where our focus is going to be. The other reason that I really want to focus on this is because all of them fall under Saturn's gaze. So we've got Saturn in, oh, where's Saturn? He is in Sagittarius. Um, and let's have a look here. So they all fall under Saturn's gaze, Saturn's 10th aspect. So Uttra Falguni and Hasta Nakshatras are highlighted uh, as these planets move into Virgo. Now, Uttra Falguni, what is one of the things that caught my eye in the research there was individual effort against all odds, right? And Hasta is symbolized by the hand. And that's giving me a feel of all hands on deck. Um, the later half of the month is about work, getting you to consider what's within your power, what's in hand, what's out of hand in your life. Okay, And that's really what I'm focusing on in the mini readings. We're looking at Virgo. We're looking at what your service to the world. We're looking at what are you going to do about it, right? Because it's opposite Pisces. Pisces is all is one. There are forces outside of our control. Um, I am a small part of a big thing. We're in Virgo here and we're looking at it's you, okay? And it's down to you and what are you going to do and what's in your control and what's not in your control. And it is about drawing the line. It is about drawing the line and saying, I can do this much, but I can't do that. Okay, so that's where we're going to focus our attention for this month. Another bit of major news. This is major. Gosh, how could I have left this till the end? Saturn is turning direct on 18th of September. Big, big, big news. I am super excited about that. I really feel Saturn. Um, he's so many things to me. He's, he's my main lord. I have Saturn aspect. I have Saturn aspect on my moon. I, ha I have a lot of Saturn going on. And you can see it in my build as well. It's pretty obvious. So um, I'm very happy that he's going forward. Uh, I will be feeling that, I'm sure. Now, he will be stationary as well, and this is something I wanted. If you're an expert on Saturn stationary, please do comment below if uh, you've got a different idea on this. I'm seeing that he's stationary uh, until about the 23rd of September because as I clicked up through my software, which is Parashara's Light 9.0, as I click up through that, I noticed that um, it's kind of at, at the approximate like 19 degrees 47 minute mark um, he's quite stationary there and that's up until from what I see um, 23rd of September so if you've got different information to me please put that in the description in the comments below I'd love to hear from you um, but I know that as a rough rule it's about five days he's stationary and this looks about right to me um, Okay, let's have a look at the moon situation. What moons have we got uh, happening this month? Well, new moon is 30th August. So, you know, um, that's Magha Nakshatra Leo. That's at approximately 5.37 a.m. UK time. Uh, Leo Magha Nakshatra is quite beautiful. And what I'm saying here is it's a great time to reimagine the kingdom of your life. Um, great time to brainstorm ideas for how you want to lead your life, how you want to spend your time, how you want to manage your finances. And yes, finances. We are going to get quite practical in these mini readings. I think for all of us in the month of September, in the next couple of months, it is going to be a bit boring. It is going to be a bit practical hands on work related um, finances getting a grip on your finances, that kind of thing. I think that's going to be important for everybody across the board. And that's kind of mid-September onwards. Um, so if we have a look at this full moon, we've got 13 September full moon, Purva Badra Pada Nakshatra, um, Aquarius. So this is roughly, uh, I apologise, I'm just sniffing away here. I am 
But you know, I went to I went to Brisbane. Apologies about this, everyone. I'm just going to have to blow my nose. I hope that was off camera this time. I think I had to do that one once before, and I was very much on camera. When I was in Brisbane, I was sneezing like crazy. I think I was allergic to Brisbane. I had the biggest allergies. I've come back to Sydney and I'm fine, except for that mild little sniffle just now. Let's have a look here. 13 September full moon, Purvabhadra Padra Nakshatra, Aquarius. So what do we have going on here? Um, this is approximately 11.32 p.m. UK time. This one's for the collective. This is a big one. This could be... Mm. Well, I, I hope something culminates in a positive way here for all of humanity. I've got a note here um, that it's for the collective. It's for any collective you are particularly connected to. So what are the lessons you can learn from being part of this larger group? And again, example, Hong Kong protesters. That That is coming to mind for me, Hong Kong. It's kind of like, but it could be any big group. It could be your corporation. Maybe there'll be a culmination of something that you all collectively come to or realise or learn or closure even. Wouldn't that be amazing? It could be to do with your company. You know, it could be to do with... Um, I'm kind of thinking sort of large groups that you might be connected to. And it could be to do with things of national identity. It, it could be that big. So it's a big full moon, that 13 September full moon. That's exciting. All right. So how about we get into the mini report? So I'm going to do a little introduction to the mini report. And what I'm hoping is that everyone will watch this introduction and then click on their little mini bit. Um, if you click on your mini bit this time and don't watch any introduction in terms of what I've just said or what I'm about to say now, this time's report might seem a bit thin and a bit, what is she talking about? So I'm really hoping that you guys watch the, this introduction or have watched some of my other introduction that I've just done. It's a bit messy today. Apologies. Um, but yeah, things have been busy for me <laughs> here. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, this time, I'm not so much looking at, we've got some very familiar energies that have been embedded for several months now, and I'm not going to go into these. So what am I not looking at? I'm not particularly looking at Jupiter and Scorpio. He's direct. We kind of know what he feels like now. Um, Saturn and Ketu in Sagittarius, we, we really know that one well now. Um, that's a very familiar energy to all, to all of us. And we've got Rahu in Gemini, again, a very familiar energy now. So... What I want to concentrate on is the movement. And the movement this time, it's exciting. Um, we've got four planets shifting from Leo to Virgo, as I said in the opening comments. So we've got Sun, Mars, Mercury and Venus. Now the dates I've already provided in the opening. But as a quick note, um, they make their shift 11 September. So what I said in the larger intro was if you can rest until about September 11, 9 to 11, that would be a good thing to do. But after that, it's time to look at what's under your locus of control. So I want to talk about the locus of control, which is a psychological term. And basically what this term is, is it's all about you looking at what's within your control. And this, this is, it's a very large concept but it's a very critical concept to the build of our psyche because some of us are quite open and expansive and we have an external locus of control <clears throat> I know for some things I do I know that you do because you're tuning into an astrology report so you would likely have some kind of external locus of control in that you think that outside that there are things outside of your control that affect or impact or build your life. You, apologies, everyone. The camera just got cut, as it does at the 24-minute mark. It's just something about my camera. I don't know what that is. I should Google search. I use a Canon G7X Mark II, so I will, I'll get around to figuring that out. I don't know. 
But where was I? I was talking about the locus of control and I was saying that as someone who's into astrology as I am, as you are, there's some part of us that has some form of external locus of control. We acknowledge that the outside world can can shape our lives. You know, not everything is within our hands, right? Um, and I think it's important and wise to have some form of external locus of control. You listen to someone like Bill Gates. He acknowledges the role of luck in his life, that it wasn't just down to his hard work that he got so successful, right? And I think that's really important. And I think a healthy person has a good balance between what's within their control and what's outside of their control. Um, it's a far bigger concept than just that, but I'm just boiling it down to that for the purposes of this report. So I wanted to talk about this because I really think that the planets are getting us to look at what's within our control. And I believe that that is, you know, when everybody, so we've got Sun, Mars, Mercury and Venus, when they're making their shift, September 11 onwards into Virgo and they're making that shift into Virgo and they're falling under Saturn's gaze, his 10th aspect, right? So Saturn's involved here too. And Saturn will be going forward, 18th onwards. So, okay, he'll be stationary for a bit. But it's, and that was the other thing I wanted to say to all of you that think about Saturn, you know, he's been checking the karmic logs and if you picture him with a clipboard and he's checking and he's, he's got his head down. But when he goes forward, he's going to get have his head up and he's going to be looking at you, right? And he's going to be looking right at you. He's going to be watching you. What are you doing now? So we've got this kind of energy um, coming about mid-September onwards. And what I really think is that this month, the planets are asking us to look at what's within our control and to do something about it, to, to, to do things, to do the right things, to be building our lives, to using what's within our control to shape up our lives, to get organised, to get ready, to build, to do. We're going to have more of that doing type energy now. So because Virgo is, is very much a doer, Virgo is very much... Um, kind of energy sorry I'm just conscious that I'm in a library and there are people walking by and I'm talking about subjects that are probably not very university like <laughs> I'm going Virgo is a doer and someone just walks by and has a, has a good look in here anyway um, let's have a look at my notes so I make sure I'm up to speed here yeah, it's a psychological term used to show how you're influenced, the locus of control. I think it's, I think, yeah, I think this is the appropriate thing to be discussing for this Virgoan sort of time. Four planets, yeah, this month with four planets lighting up Virgo and Saturn's 10th aspect on Virgo, we're all going to be asked to get more hands-on with our careers, our service in the world and what's in our locus of control. So what I'm going to do in these mini breakdowns is I'm going to go through each sign and we're going to look at Virgo in your um, setup. We're going to see which house we're really looking at. So that's all that I'm concentrating on this, this time. So it's going to be quite brief. Um, why don't we get stuck in? And, and what, what we're really doing is we're looking at what's within your locus of control. What area are the planets lighting up? What do they want you to look at? What do they want you to do something about? And Virgo is, it is that kind of energy because don't forget it also rules digestion. And what is digestion doing? Digestion is, is figuring out, it is that locus of control thing, sort of. It's kind of going, well, this is what we keep and this is what we reject. Yeah, this is what I need, this is what I don't need. And that's something that I think we need to be doing mid-September onwards. We need to be looking at our lives going, this is what I can do something about, this is what I can't do something about, and therefore I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not just going to drain my worry energy into pointless things that have no effect. I'm going to keep all of my energy and I'm going to be constructive and I'm going to build and I'm going to do something because this is earth as well. Um, there's also sort of self-effort type energy here. Um, this is when we're not leaving it up to the universe, you know, 
which is kind of Piscean, right? It, it, Pis- Pisces has that wonderful spiritual perspective of we're part of a greater thing. Um, but Virgo is very much about what's here. It's that kind of start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. I can't remember who said that, but someone famous did. And um, it's a very good quote. Okay, let's go through the signs and have a look at what's going on for everyone. Aries moon. Aries moon, welcome. So let's have a look at where this energy is impacting you. And if you haven't seen the intro to this mini report, I recommend you watch that intro because it will this will make more sense if you watch that little intro. So for you, where is your locus of control? What are we looking at here? For you, you're being asked to look closely at how you serve others through your career in terms of, you know, the later September time when the four planets are moving into Virgo. Um, What's within your control, career or service-wise? This could also be to do with competition or legal disputes. Again, what's in your power to do something about? Maybe it's in your power to to drop the case, you know. Maybe that's the right course of action, but it is going to be looking at what's in your control and what can you affect Um, I've got a note here, what do you need to discard or not worry about at all? Okay, is there something that you're worried about that you really, you're draining energy away into that and you shouldn't be worried about it? Okay, this is really going to be the month to stop that. And it is going to be the month to devote your good energy to what's within your control from a service or career perspective. So Aries Moon, that's all I have for you this time. Apologies, it's very short. Um, but come back next month and, well, I'll work out what it's going to be next month. So (laughs) this time it just felt like a short mini check-in is all I need with everyone. So Aries Moon, thank you so much for stopping by and we're now going to talk to Taurus Moon. Taurus Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So if you haven't watched the intro to this mini report, please do because it'll help you understand what I'm talking about here. Basically, we've got a shift of planets from Leo to Virgo and we're really looking at the Virgo end of things because that's going to be quite nicely lit up. We've got Saturn's 10th aspect um, on those planets. This is quite significant. And what we're really doing is looking at what's within your control to do something, okay? Um, What's within your control, what's not within your control. This is what you're going to need to figure out in that September Virgo sort of time. So... I think that this is asking you to look at your speculative investments, your money invested in shares, um, if you've got money invested in cryptocurrencies, basically it's it's investments, could also be in relation to children or any businesses or side businesses or creative projects that you run or are starting or are considering starting. So with any of these ventures, what's in your control and what shouldn't you be worried about? Or what can't you be worried about? This is really f- about figuring that out, figuring out what can you have an impact on and what's not within your control, you know, what you shouldn't be, um, what you shouldn't be worried about. For example, maybe you need to take money out of the share market. Okay, um, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that that's what you need to do. That's something you need to figure out. And... Um, Part of what's in your locus of control is getting financial advice. Maybe this is the month to do that in September. So, Taurus Moon, thank you so much for stopping by. And we are now going to meet Gemini Moon. Gemini Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, if you haven't seen the introduction to this mini report, I suggest you do so. Uh, It would really help with understanding what I'm talking about here. But... I will quickly go over what this is about. So basically we've got a shift of planets from Leo to Virgo. This is happening over September. We're really kind of looking September 11 onwards when everybody's moving into Virgo. We've got Saturn's 10th aspect on these four planets. So it's a pretty exciting time. And what we're really looking at is what's in your locus of control. What can you affect or impact or do something about And what shouldn't you be worrying about, right? So now this is going to be for you in relation to your home property area. Um, So for example, property prices might be going down. But maybe it's in your locus of control or your remake. Maybe you can improve your home and add value. Or maybe if you're buying a place, um, you know, you're able to... 
meet with a property investor and, and learn something and learn some tip and figure something out and do something that not everyone else is doing, something like that, right? So it's it's the really practical actions that you can take to make a difference to this area of your life. And it is in regards to home, property, um, Here's another simple one. Maybe maybe you're renting and maybe it's time for a big clutter clear. You know, that's within your locus of control. Maybe you are looking to buy a place. I know someone who's in this situation. They're looking to buy a place but they've been told keep renting. Maybe it's that. Maybe you need to change the game plan altogether. And when they got that advice, it was such a weight off. They were like, oh, good, because they were feeling the pressure of getting into the market but didn't have enough money, trying to save, all this difficult stuff. And, yeah, and um, it's like what's within your locus of control? What can you figure out or say to yourself or do or something like that to ease the pressure, maybe the, the pressure on your shoulders? It could, could even be something along those lines. So Gemini Moon, I apologise it's so short and so brief this time, but, uh, it, you know, stay tuned. There's more to come and next month we might be going into some other things. So please do come by again. And thank you for watching. All right, we are now going to meet Cancer Moon. Cancer Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, this time's report is very mini-mini. Um, if you could watch the introduction to um, this mini report there'll be a link in the description below it'd be good to watch the introduction to the mini reports um, it will help with this so just very very quickly what are we doing we are looking at a shift of planets from leo to virgo there's four of them and that i cover in the mini intro basically we've also got saturn's 10th aspect here so there's quite a lot of planetary energy and and saturn's there too and he'll be forward for most of that so all of this energy is asking you to look at your self-efforts in life. So what's in your control regarding your career or business? What's not in your control? Um, perhaps it's your self-image. Perhaps it's how you present yourself to the world. Um, how do you sell yourself? Perhaps it's time to redo your CV, um, freshen up your business logo, um, but it is to do with your self-effort. It's to do with courage. It's, it's to do with peers. It could be to do with hobbies or groups that you're in. Maybe there's a group that you've been attending like every week or something and you're starting to realise, you know, this, this group doesn't quite feel like me or... Um, or I need to make a change, or checking, am I doing too much? You know, the, the reciprocal nature of friends, this, this might be even that as well um, for you. So there could be quite a lot to be looking at. And it's, it, it would be about looking at what's within your effort and control and what's outside of your effort and control. And with friendship, that is a big concept because... You know, well, there is that quid pro quo. There is that sort of, am I giving too much? Am I not receiving? There could be some of that in there for you as well to be looking at. That might be coming to a head or issues around that might be might be surfacing. Um, so that will require your energy and it will require you to, to contemplate and think about some of these things. But it's, it's, it's looking quite good. Um, to me, Cancer Moon. So thank you so much for stopping by. And we're now going to meet Leo Moon. Leo Moon, welcome. Uh, today is a very mini, mini report, very short. Um, if you could watch the introduction to this report, that would help you. Um, but just very quickly, I will explain that we've got a shift of planets from Vir from Leo to Virgo. And there's four of them. We've also got Saturn aspect on those four planets. And that's where I'm really going to concentrate today. Now, for you, that's happening in your second house. And this is asking you to take a look at large savings, family wealth, um, what's in control, what's in your control regarding how you structure your major assets, your savings or big wealth, big money, the big money that sustains you, right? How is that structured and what's in your control to do something about? Maybe you need to 
make some shifts or changes there. You know, um, how can you increase your responsibility even? Um, is there a need to increase your responsibility towards yourself or towards your family even? Um, some people are, you know, I, I even know some people who are looking to expand their families and things like that. Um, and some of them, they are in that process, it's going well. I know one person, she's having a baby, there's all this stuff going on. I also know someone who recently has decided she doesn't want to pursue that anymore. Um, so and sometimes that's within your control. That's the thing that's within your control, deciding not to do something, okay? So this concept of responsibility, you could be taking on more responsibility family-wise, equally. You might be deciding, do you know what? No, I can't because that's what's within your control to say no, okay? So, Leo Moon, I hope that's been helpful. Um, please do come by next time. I know it's been very brief, but each time I change and I shift, so come and see what's happening next time. Uh, so where were we? Leo Moon, weren't we? So Virgo Moon. Virgo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, today's a very mini, mini report. Um, please do watch the introduction to this. It will help put some context around what it is I'm saying. But just quickly to share with you, we've got a shift of planets from Leo to Virgo, four of them. When they go into Virgo, they're all going to fall under Saturn's gaze, Saturn's 10th aspect. And here, I mean, this is happening in your first house. So the planets are really getting you to look at your physical health and overall well-being. So what's in your control health-wise? Um, while you might have an ongoing health challenge, you can exercise, you can relax more if that's what's required. Um, you know, perhaps, and it's like, how can you build more relaxation into your everyday life? So let's say you're waiting for a bus every day. Maybe that's the time during that 10, 15 minute wait that you decide, oh, this is perfect meditation time. I'm actually going to think about nothing. I'm going to put my phone away. I'm not going to think anything. I'm going to listen to the birds and I'm just going to be... You know, that is really the kind of thing um, that you can be looking to do, which would be a boost to your physical health, definitely. Perhaps it's a new um, health regime or something like that as well, fitness type thing. But um, but this is and this this is bigger than that. I mean, it is your physical self. It's it's your whole life. Like what's within your control in your whole life and what's not in your control and who are you as a person do you have more of an external locus of control where you're constantly wondering how outside forces are going to shape your life or are you is your will energy quite strong do you believe do you know what I can use my free will and I can do so much maybe it's that maybe you're contemplating these things so there's quite a lot here for you Virgo Moon um, we could go into it in depth. I'd love to talk about it more, but I'm going to have to get on with the next one.